Did you know that germ theory has never been proven? Hello, it's December 2021, and I'm briefly going to talk about making informed conclusions as opposed to making uninformed conclusions, and this can apply to any topic at any time. And I've said in the past, for example, how everything natural, normal, and needed, for example, to survive has been vilified, and I've used it throughout history the example of CO2, carbon, and everything in this world is carbon-based. And someone had geniusly figured out a way to tax air using the myth of carbon. They have taxed water, they have taxed land, they have taxed food, they have taxed people, and now they can tax air. So how this ties in with, for example, current worldwide events is a lot of people don't understand what they're afraid of contracting. What is it? And we're going to call it a widget because I have to very carefully wordcraft my words here. So try to remember that. So we're going to call this a widget. And people are afraid of contracting this widget and they have no idea what this widget is. And there's even many professionals coming out talking about remedies for this widget. Now this widget is not a living thing. It cannot be contracted through environment. It can only be introduced directly through uh, into the body via a needle. It turns off and on when needed. It acts as a detergent to rid of pathogens and bacteria. Now, pathogens and bacteria can be treated with things called antibiotics. And I know some people are going to dispute that, but for whatever antibiotics. If someone has a bacterial or uh, pathogen infection, you treat it and deal with it. But anytime somebody has a widget type of infection, then you have to let it run its course because that is the body doing its thing. For some reason, a lot of people have forgotten about that. So I'm going to further expand on all this, people's concerns on catching the widget, how you can see through a lot of the nonsense, even by professionals, talking about contracting the widget and remedies and how to avoid it and everything else. And this directly correlates with everything that I've been saying, how many may wake up to one or several things only to slumber in something else while slumbering in everything else. So a lot of people are opposed for example, to what's being imposed by current worldwide events, they see through that, but they still may accept that the widget is a threat. And then people convince themselves that they, or they know someone, or they've heard of someone who has had the widget. And this ties in with the studies made famous by Julia Shaw in planting false memories. Now in her study, it's an external so it starts off externally, and then by the end of her study, which she had to cut short because people were getting traumatized by this, people started to make up their own story to support the false memory that she was implanting in them. And it's not that hard. And she even says herself, she is surprised at the rate of people accepting a false narrative with regards to whatever she was trying to implant this false memory. So a lot of people are convincing themselves, for example, they had the widget and the widget's dangerous and everything else. Again, people don't understand what the widget is. And exposure to bacteria and pathogens actually helps uh, develop, make stronger the defense mechanisms of the body. And the more sterile someone becomes, the, the weaker their defenses are and the more susceptible they are to 
bacteria and pathogens. Their widget weakens, and that's the problem. So I'm going to give an example, and I've seen this come up recently where people were talking about a particular fast food chain and how there's toxins and chemicals preserving their burgers so they don't decay. Well, years ago, and I've mentioned this in other videos over the years, I knew someone who was getting their doctorate in some sort of molecular biology or something. I can't remember. This is a long time ago. But I do remember this conversation and they were writing their doctorate. One of the things that they were doing was they uh, examined this particular fast food chain's food products. And they didn't find any chemicals or anything, but what they did find was this particular fast food chain had taken out um, most, if not all, the bacteria from their food products. That's why it didn't decay. Now where this becomes unhealthy is everything has bacteria on and in it. Even on our skin, on our face, in our mouths, everywhere. And you can scrub away all you want, it's there. And this applies to the foods that we eat. That bacteria that's in or on the foods helps our digestive system digest the food. Without those bacterias, it causes havoc with the digestive system. And this is where it actually becomes unhealthy. The, our digestive systems have a hard time breaking down these food products. It has nothing to do with chemicals or anything else. And I remember when I learned about this, I was, uh, it was in the middle of my, my law career. And I kind of looked into it. I remember looking into it and the, the countless of lawsuits that people, customers were making against this particular fast food chain was enormous. Claiming that, you know, the food, uh, you know, they got sick or something. Basically, it was a cash grab. Now, I'm just going to interject here. No matter who's cooking foods or whatever else, it's bound to happen that, you know, some bacteria pathogen uh, that's not good for you ends up being digested and somebody gets sick. It happens. And you have to also consider the volume of food, meals, that any fast food chain makes each day at one location. Now multiply that across all their locations each day and then multiply that by every single day throughout the year. That's a lot of meals. And if there's one or two meals that sure something goes wrong, it happens. But you know, whatever people want to win the lottery with a lawsuit, right? So based on those two sets of facts, it stands to reason how uh, this particular fast food chain took out all the bacteria because they want to avoid the lawsuits. So whose fault is that? Is that the fast food chain or is that the people, the customers, trying to make a buck, an easy buck? Now this ties into being sterile. The more sterile you are, the more susceptible you are to becoming ill. And this ties in with foods from this, for example, this particular fast food chain being very sterile. It's unhealthy. So just things to think about. People really need to know what they're talking about. Do some research. It's not hard to do. And because of current worldwide events for the past few years, you're going to have to go back prior uh, to the past two, three years and start learning about what the widget is. Okay? And I'm also going to close off by saying that there's no evidence that what is being imposed based on the current worldwide events has ever worked on anything. There's an assumption that it may have worked, setting aside that everything runs its course. 
nothing lasts forever, good or bad. And so that assumption, you know, they would bank on, it's no different than, as we're told in history, how in the Mayan culture, they would do human sacrifices to stop a solar eclipse. People bought into that. So I just wanted to give some, some things to think about with regards to current worldwide events, making an informed conclusion as opposed to uninformed conclusion. Look into it, and then because you start looking into it, it really, you can start to see the plethora of nonsense, even from a lot of professionals. And a lot of professionals will make the assumption that, okay, well, this is real, not necessarily knowing the whole story and then make their own conclusions. So, you know, a lot of them are acting in good faith. Okay. So anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Prove what someone does or does not do adds to their lifespan.